say good morning. It's kind of good afternoon where we're starting. Welcome to Two Funny Mamas. And I am Sherry <laughs> Shepard. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm sorry. What and is, I'm Kim Whitley. Because you okay, said Two wait. Funny Mamas. I was trying to do a sound yeah. effect. Like, ha, ha, ha. No? That is that how a Two Funny Mamas would sound? Let's try it again. Hey, everybody. Okay. Welcome to Two Funny Mamas. No, no, we don't sound like that. That's not you. We didn't. Where, where'd you grow up? Were you, what? I'm you trying. To, like I'm projecting energy. Into it. Oh, well, first I, but all, you, I am where? articulate. When I do a podcast, my articulation comes in full force and effect. <laughs> but, I know. It's really, it's really Caucasian. But I'm okay, saying look. you came in with this like horrific um, noise that sounded like your stomach was on on fire. Okay, so try it again. To... Try it again. I have this. Right, go. Okay, go, okay, great. Go. Here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Two Funny Mamas. Hi, everyone. What's up? It's your girl, Kim Whitley, in his aisles. And that wasn't good. I don't know what you were doing. I thought you were going back to the ha, 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 ha. But oh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, say it again one more time. This is the last time. Hey, okay, all right. Okay. Hey, everybody. Okay. Welcome to Two Funny Mamas. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, forget it. I'm Kim Willis, Shepherd, y'all. Welcome. It's ridiculous. First of all, we have to introduce you, and I'm going to tell you why this is not going to work. So we're going to do this one more time. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Two Why Funny your Mamas. volume go down? All of a sudden, your volume went down. It was weird. No. Where's the, your mic? There's a technical choice. Oh. That's Chris said it was a technical choice. Thank you, Chris. My man. It's Chris. That's our Chris who helps us with our podcast. It is Chris, y'all. He fine. You should see him. He got this arm on him. Too early. Like, too early. It's too. Wait. It's too hold up. To be I, I better. Back. I better close the door. What if the little boy gets up? Okay. Go ahead. And then we can know. Okay. I'll close it later. Okay. Go ahead. We have to look at this I'm, podcast as foreplay, Kim. You don't start off talking about the oh. sexual stuff. As soon as we start, like we're, it's off putting. So when people oh. listen to us, that you have to lead them into freaky. Like you don't start oh. off freaky. We want them to come back. We want them to come back. So if you don't, so even in foreplay, you go boom real quick. No, that's don't. not good. Well, that's what, no. how we do as we get older. It's like that's all we want quickly and let's Got it. Go. Okay. As the podcast, we're taking people on a journey. And mm -hmm. the journey, you don't start off with the stuff that you end with. So at Got this it. point, I'm just saying thank you, Chris, cool. who is with Midcoast Media, and he helps us with our podcast. So sometimes yeah, he does. Voice. Yeah, he does. Let's get uh, off for Chris, uh, nyah, 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 and then keep going. <laughs> okay, sorry, I don't so want to get I, up we, off Chris. <laughs> okay, huh? Soon. Okay, we didn't introduce ourselves. I just said welcome to Two Funny Mamas. I'm Sherry Shepard, and I'm Kim Whitley. Okay, I, hit the I like the soap opera voice. I'm not sure where it's coming from, but okay. Cause I gotta, I gotta stop. Well, stop it with that. What are you doing? You got the- I, I was smiling and trying to be articulate. I never okay, moved my mouth. I feel like, what's our girl on Murder, She Wrote? Not Murder, She Wrote, uh, uh, Scandal. Uh, uh, Carrie Washington. What's her Carrie Washington. You know, she over yeah, she enunciate. Does that. Carrie does that thing with her mouth. Because she's very articulate. Okay. Well, for people, okay. our fans who are listening to the podcast and who are not seeing the actual podcast, if you subscribe and hit that button and subscribe, you'll get to see this, the crazy faces Kim Whitley is making. And I think it's because she's got these crazy looking glasses on, which I absolutely, I good morning. I don't like to be negative. I hate those glasses. I absolutely hate those glasses. These glasses... I was wearing these kind of glasses. They're pointed glasses, like cat glasses, like back in the 50s. I was wearing them doing my Corona Chronicles. And when I don't put on my eyelashes, um, I tend to put on glasses, you know, and I think it adds character. Why does it have to be like, because I have glasses too. And I, know and I was going to suggest you put them back on. Woo, that's better. Thank you. Oh God, I, was, I didn't know how I was gonna text you or say, please put those glasses back on. I didn't know what to say. Why you don't like my eyes without the glasses? Is that what you say? Cause I don't have on lashes. I stopped wearing lashes. I mean, they're okay. You know, it's cute. 
<laughs> you're not going to, you don't bother me. See, this is where the confidence comes from. You don't bother me. But I, I, I've stopped wearing eyelashes because, and I'm saying, you know, you can see Kim with these crazy glasses on because when I, if I wear fake lashes, when I put my glasses on, it's hitting the lens and then I can't, I can't even close my eyes. It's too much. And I put on my glasses because these are my podcast glasses. And I oh, feel like okay. if I, I feel like stuff is going to my brain with my glasses on. Okay. Oh, she got a podcast. Glasses. Podcast glasses. But I got to say about your glasses, you know, and it's a reflection. So I'm going to take them off. Chris is going to have to tell me if they look crazy. Your glasses, you look like a cat lady. You look like one of those crazy ladies that have a hundred cats that is going to be on hoarders. Like I, I always see it from your look. I, I am a baby hoarder. So I feel like I should have these glasses because I have lots of glasses. You do not look like I can say, Kim, let's go to some place uh, really swanky and have a cocktail and chill out. And then that really good looking man who's a CEO is going to come and talk to us. You know what they're going to say? Are you two looking for a job? <laughs> See, what you don't know about the CEO men is when you wear these glasses, this is what they like. You understand? Think about like, look okay, at that too, smart too. looking girl. Remember, remember foreplay, foreplay. I'm just telling you like it is, ladies. If you look the opposite of what you really are, that's how you snatch them up. They like that. Ask Chris, 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 don't you like when the woman looks smart, but then you get her home and she's a prostitute? Huh? Typic typically. Too soon. Tip what? Do okay. we need to have a meeting? Do we need to have like an executive meeting before we start our podcast just to see kind of where we're going to meander until we okay. get to the, the cataclysmic, is that the, is that I the am so sick of you making up words every podcast. I talk to you every morning and I talk to you every night. I even talk to you sometimes in the middle of the day. You don't use this kind of, these kind of words. So I don't know what you got your little dictionary out, your little thesaurus or something, but I need you to stop it. Cataclysmic, kamuka kadaka, shanaka nikit laka wupa. It's cataclysmic, Kim. You, I'm telling you, it's my glasses. I put these glasses on, and stuff just comes to me. Clatter. So what you say that cataclysmic. word? Cataclysmic. The word of the day for Sherry. That's what we're gonna do. Word of the day. Ask Alexa, what does cataclysmic mean? Cataclysmic. My, cataclysmic. Yeah. Thank you, you so much because you sent me in. I got something. Hey, Chris, is this too much like reflection in my eyeglasses? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, it's not it's not perfect, but I think it looks all right. And uh, okay. if you're more comfortable, if you can see better, if you stay closer to the camera, it's not nearly as bad. Like, but that's it's not. Bad. Oh, well, maybe I should say just don't move a ton. Like, yeah. stay, no, stay still. Show off your acting chops. Just there be real go. still. It's not that's bad at all. Play a podcaster who can't move. <laughs> it Here's the thing. Chris is the voice because he helps us with our podcast. It's also in Hollywood. There's a term called the voice of God. When you hear the voice off stage come through. We're not saying that Chris is God, but for purposes of lingo, he's the voice of God. So I'm, yes. when I put these glasses on, things just come to me. And I feel like, you know, I feel like that little naughty librarian kind of vibe. Thank you. That's what I was trying to say. Alexa. Is cataclysmic a word? Let's see. Let's see what yes. She's... Mick is a word in the dictionary, oh. which is usually defined as a small notch, groove, chip. No, like, no, no. Put into or existing in something. No, no. Alexa, what does cataclysmic mean? Is that the word? Cataclysmic. The adjective cataclysmic is usually defined as of, relating to, or resulting from any violent upheaval especially one of a social or political nature. Okay, that's enough. More, okay, I just want to prove Sherry's wrong. Okay, I don't. I don't. I'm done. I just want to prove to Sherry. She didn't it's use the word. In the right, you didn't use it in the right content. She said it's of a violent nature. So I said when you get to the cataclysmic orgasm of the discussion, the violent nature. Violent nature, nature yeah. that's not the correct use. Because yeah, when, you, when you have a cataclysmic you know, we don't, you, you, you're manipulating me to talk about sex and, and you got me. You almost got me, Kim, because I put these glasses on, I, I caught it. So we're not even going there. Just okay. know that cataclysmic is a word. And it's so funny because when you said, Alexa, mine define cataclysmic. You, thank you. Like, and I want to explain this to our, to our viewers. 
I got in the mail from Amazon a box. Mm -hmm. In the box, I got these metal straws. Let me grab it really quickly. I'm mad that you don't have your metal straw. The metal straw was for the podcast because you drink out of a plastic cup and then you don't have, you know, a straw and you're messing up your lipstick and everything. So I got from Amazon these, I'm sorry about my nails. We got to talk about this. It's COVID. These metal straws and I got an an Alexa because she's listening. I got an Alexa, a little dot and I didn't know who sent it because there was no card. And uh, I was like, I never said thank you because I didn't know who to say thank you to until Kim called me and said, did you get what I sent? So apparently this metal straw is what Oprah uses. That's and right. Metal, but it be, don't let it hit your teeth because that you'll take your teeth out. Uh, uh, ooh. So. But she, yeah, she likes the metal straw because it doesn't move around. You know how the the, flim, the other flimsy ones are just flimsy. Oh, you're always looking for it. You're looking, always looking for it. Right. So the metal straw yeah, stays where it is. And it's good for the uh, it's good for the environment because we're not throwing straws around and they're not getting caught right. in turtles' noses and blah blah blah. Even though I do have my own line of grass straws, uh, Kim Whitley products. Remember, I have uh, grass straws Where that can we. Can you go to get your grass straws? I love it. They're actually in stores, uh, but um, I, I usually have them behind straw? me. Like this is but a they... straight straw. Mm-hmm. And it's and it came with a cleaner too, so you can like you can clean this. This is what I love because you can't do this with straws. You can clean it with this little cleaner, and if you got a straw that's bent, it also still see how we doing the whole straw. Yeah, like this. I think it's so cool these metal straws. If you guys and Kim Willie got them for me, and we're yes, going back I to yours, did. and they're called Yi Hong. Yeah, okay, that, but they have plenty of them on yeah on Amazon. If you want yeah. uh, uh, a so, metal straw, I got to put my grass straws on. We got to talk about my products one day. That's fine. That Kim Willie product. I, I got to connect it. Hmm? You, you, you're very creative, and you come from a family of architects who have designed so many things uh, across the United States. Your father, your uncle, your brothers, and so what I love about you is you always create. You don't advertise the way you should. You create and, and, no. and don't follow through. So you have so many inventions. One day we're just gonna do the podcast on your inventions. So you have grass straws. Yes. Why do I have you grass feel like straws. you had to make straws with grass? Well, because of they are getting rid of plastic straws. And you know how you go to the restaurant and you they give you these paper straws? But by the time you finish your drink, they've already melted. They're not good. You can't get the water out of them. Well, the grass straw, yeah, get them out of uh, Vietnam, made of grass. They are sturdy, just like those metal uh-huh. straws, but they're out of out of grass and they can dissolve into the environment because they're out of grass. And and if they get into the ocean, eventually they'll, you know, get soft out of grass and turtles and fish and we're not uh, messing up. So you're up. being environmentally conscious. I love that. So I'm going to tell people, where did, where did they get these grass straws? Okay, well, let me ask Rodney. Okay, because, we don't gotta go through all that. You don't even know your product is being sold. Because this is the thing, we sell the product to stores like Whole Foods and uh, uh, what's it, uh, Anwar, whatever, uh, Sprouts. Like it's in those kind of stores, and there it's grass straws, and it's and it's, uh, and it's Whitley products. And I have it right here, Smart Butt. Here they are. That's you want to see? You just answered butt. your own question. Oh, well, I got, like we got little ones. J- just pull them out, Kim. Okay. There you go. I love that. I wait, love wait, let me show you. These are the little, wait, let me show you the back. This is what's, oh, that, oh, that's yeah. where you get them from. Grass straw, dr- grass drinking straws.com. And uh, yeah, but. Kim, this is like amazing. You know, I'm going to do a podcast. Name Where is it say Whitley Park? Wait, that's the wrong ones. Hold up. Are you sure? Bad, don't look right? at that one. Don't look at that one. That That's not where you get them from. Okay, well, first of all, I people who are listening, Kim is holding up a box of grass straws that she created and that have been sold in stores. And this is what I love. My gosh, we got to do a podcast on how do you start your own business? I was sitting there talking to a okay. makeup artist yesterday who who has a lot. She's a, she, excuse me, she's a hair artist, but she's got a line of lingerie. She's got a beauty shop. She sells makeup, like, that entrepreneurial spirit. I t- I just got so um, energized 
looking at something that you created that you have in Whole Foods and Sprouts. I feel like I need to borrow some money. Oh, no, no, no. Wait a minute. I'm not good at advertising, remember? You said you, you were not good at advertising. Because, Kim, why didn't I know this? Why aren't your friends? And what is that? Just show that you, Kim created, she's holding up for our listeners and for yes. our viewers. This is, in this product, I love that Kim invented. You know, when you have a car that's a newer uh, year, the car, okay, you can put it down, Kim. I'm, I'm explaining it. It's it quick stick. Like a, I was showing them. It's now you can get this stick. on Amazon. You can get this on Amazon. Well, let me explain what quick stick is because I love it. If you drive a car, you know, they, and you have a baby that rides in a baby carrier, a car seat, you know, those latch, um, the latch things in the car that hook up to the car seat. Yeah, Kim the seat created belt. this product in, you know, you have to put your seatbelt in the latch and it's really hard. You'll be putting your seatbelt in the latch. If anybody has had to do that, trying to get that seatbelt hooked up to the latch and yeah. unhooked from the latch is a nightmare. Try having an Uber with the car seat and they want you to get out of their cab or the Uber, but it's so hard to unhook and hook the car seat, the seat belt for the car seat to the latch. Kim created something that's called the quick stick and you can get it on Amazon, Q-U-I-K. Nope, nope. We had to spell it different. It's K-W. Oh, K-W-I-K. I know, I made oh, it know different. Like it. It's called quick stick, Kim Whitley, uh -huh. K-W-I-K stick, S-T-I-C-K. Uh-huh. And I love this product so much because it's, it's a long stick with a little like loop at the end and you can put the seat, you can hook the seatbelt through it and then put it on the latch instead of your fingers trying to get in there and you're feeling by sight and you unhook it. And it's a really great design. That one, I was so proud of you because I, she put, but here's the way Kim Whitley does her products that she designs. It's such a great design. Kim Whitley put up one little infomercial that she made on Instagram. And we heard nothing else about this product. She didn't do it anymore. She did not come. Kim has a, a plethora of friends with huge platforms. She okay. Did not, no, be quiet because this is a, a podcast we have to talk about for women about starting your own business and asking right. for help. Asking for Just, help. It's okay to ask for help because what I'm upset with you about, Kim, is when I saw the your commercial that you did on Instagram that you made yourself and it was so great. Kim didn't send out a text to any of us to say, Hey guys, my girlfriends with the huge, you know, million followers, can you just repost this commercial that I made to let people know that I designed this product that's really going to help the world, but a buckle up a car seat to the latch. She didn't do that. She did one commercial and then it was gone. You're right. Didn't ask for help. On You're Amazon, right. And thank goodness people are buying it from Amazon. But it's that thing of, it's a product that is so awesome. And had you just asked us if we could help you, we would have gall rallied around you and helped you. I'm so proud of you because you come up with, y'all see, you, you don't make me cry because I love you so much. Oh. Y'all always see Kim Whitley and she be making you laugh. But this girl is so smart. And she comes up with this stuff, but you never ask anybody. You're so used to doing stuff on your own and people but want to right. help you. They want to sleep but with you. I feel you bad at you. you. She didn't even hear what I said. What'd you say? <laughs> I said, What'd you so, say? I said, you're so smart, Kim. People want to help you. They want to sleep with you and they want to help you. So you got to, you got to double whammy. <laughs> oh, but, thank but you. But your, your, what you create is so, to me, ingenious. Because I always say to you, I tease Kim Whitley because literally her family is architects. If you go to Cleveland, Ohio, Whitley. where Kim Whitley is from, her father and his twin brother have designed so much in Cleveland Heights. The arena that they play, is it football or basketball? What is that arena, Kim? That's basketball and they did Jacobs Field, the baseball. They did Jacobs Field and where they play basketball. And that was her father and her uncle. He, her father has an identical twin brother. And they they have that that gene. And then her two brothers are architects. And so we always tease Kim because she's a comedian and an actress. And we go, what happened to you? But really, she does have that engineering <laughs> gene inside of her. And she's got that entrepreneurial spirit. And Kim is You're always... Sweet she's she just and she wants to help you 
but she don't like to ask for help. This is, you know, and, and I think that you, we need to talk about that with women that it's okay to ask for help because I don't think we were designed to be the lone ranger. And no, you're right. You, I think I will do better with that because I think you're absolutely right. If I had asked for help and just ask people, but you know, I'm so used to doing it and, and you're right, but you know what? It's not over. The product is, 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 you know, still around and I'm coming up with other products and you're right. Also, I got to, I mean, yeah. I know. And that's the thing you also, you know, ask for help because people would love to just, and, and I'm not saying, you know, because so more people can hear about this product and so that we can have it on as seen on TV. So we can have an investor come in or, or you, I would love to see you on Shark Tank with that. Cause you'd be making them laugh. They, Damon, Damon, is it Damon Dash? Damon John? Yeah. Damon would Damon be cracking so hard. He, he'd just give you a ton of money. That mean one on Shark Tank, you could have them cracking up with your quick stick and your grass straws. They give you so much money. And that way you could go global with your designs, Kim. But the other bone I have to pick with Kim is not only does she create, she don't give us nothing. Like I I didn't even know you had a grass straw. You <laughs> went and bought me straws that Oprah Winfrey uses. I did. Before you even said, Sherry, I created something called a grass straw that would help us when you're, you know, when we're doing the podcast, this would be great for you to, to drink out of. Now, what you've done is you've advertised Oprah. Oprah got more money than God. Yes, I you're said right. it. But you're you, right. So you, you're advertising. I'm, I'm, a spin, I'm, a spin, I'm bringing you a box of grass straws today. I don't want them now because I got no. my metal straws. I got my Yee Hong straws. Yee Hong, I don't need your grass straws. No, you're going to use my grass straws. Je Jeffrey is now, when you made this quick stick, when I needed it, when Jeffrey was right. in the car seat, you didn't give me one. So now Jeffrey's 15. <laughs> I don't know what I use for to pick up his dirty draws. I think really pop him, pop him upside. He's he too old to get popped now. I don't yeah, pop him that's true. He is so, too old to get popped. So that's the other problem. You don't, you don't ask for help. And then you don't even give people your product to try so they can go, wow, this quick stick is, is pretty awesome. I am. I am going to do better. You're absolutely right. You're, so you're, oh, what God. is that? Why do why I feel like I just got chastised? You know what it is. I'm gonna be honest with you. Even with everything else, I feel like celebrities and people get asked so much that this is just another ask. So I hate asking people. I hate it. Now you, I ask all day long. That's why you do all my charity stuff. I ask you and Caroline Ray everything. I don't. Have, I don't. I don't reach out past that. You do. Nah. You, you don't mind asking me to do stuff for you. I need you to do. Do I got to put on makeup? Yes, I need you to be here. I need you, yeah. and I don't mind because I love you so much. So I'm I don't even charge. I'm doing you. my I'm nails. You. I'm sorry. I know Chris hates when I look down. Can you stop? Especially in those crazy looking glasses, because you know what it looks like. What's it, it look like? like? It looks like you don't care about what I'm saying or about our audience because you're looking down doing your nails. The audience is listening. Yeah, but this is not a listening platform. No. Can't we on YouTube? So they're watching oh. you. Oh, if it, was, if it was solely we had the two funny mamas podcast, that would ah. be different because they're driving and listening. But we also have a visual platform, darling. So people are looking at you doing your nails while we're doing the podcast. Okay, and I'm, you're making I'm weird up. faces. See, when you wear those glasses, you look weird because you make weird faces. You look like an old cat lady showing with buck teeth. And I was like, I don't know why my teeth look so big on this podcast. You're making them look big. You're you're doing that Bugs Bunny thing. Every time you got those glasses, you yeah, like that. You look weird. You on I one can, hand, I can have a, I can have an underbite. Okay, go ahead. We have digressed. Go ahead, get back on task. I apologize. Now we were starting out really good because we were going to talk to women about confidence and asking. But I've decided that we're going to make that another podcast because you're not into it and you're not following along. So we can't be serious like I want to. I even well, have emotion. I'm, I'm a little upset. Well, I, you do. So I want to tell people they can get the grass straws at grassdrinkingstraws.com, Whitley product, the Whitley product store, because I feel like I'm doing a disservice now because you've made me look at myself, but grassdrinkingstraws.com. Whitley Powell Grass Drinking Straws dot com Whitley Product Store. Thank you. You know what?
know what? Uh -huh. This podcast, it started out so beautiful and somewhere it took a left and slid down a hill and we're having trouble getting back up to the just nice flat terrain. I'm not quite sure what happened. Because we talk to each other too much. We talk <laughs> every day. So when it comes to podcasts and nobody, we ain't got no, we don't know what we're doing because we talk too much to each other. So, okay, we forget. <laughs> How have you been doing? <laughs> oh, now you, now you want to change the topic. You didn't even tell them where they could get the quick stick. <laughs> Why right. do you do that? Okay, quick stick for the it's the car seat helper. You can get that on Amazon. Uh, Show uh, me how it works. Put it up. I just need you to just start, just start. You just take the quick stick and why is it off the camera? So you always gotta get off camera. I know, okay, sorry. So but the quick stick is a my design was it, but it has a hook at the end. You hook this to the car seat, you hook that the to that little belt. hook on the car seat. The seat belt, Relax. right. You take this to the, the car's seat belt, hook it yes. now, and then all you do is flip it over and you thread it through the back of the car seat, pull it out, and you're, you could just snap it on in. That's it. And it's a, because I know when I did those, uh, those latch things, I was in an Uber with my niece and it was so hard to get it unlatched and hooked. And yes. So you got to promote two of your products, which is so great. Congratulations to you, Kim, because you are an entrepreneur. You're a businesswoman. And as a, a, a businesswoman myself, I can really appreciate you and be inspired. I'm reading the script right now. Oh, that was good. That was very <laughs> well. Barbara Walters taught you well. She really did. So now that that we offer that. But star. literally, re put a tag in it, Kim, because we're going to do a podcast where we really talk to women about being an entrepreneur and how do you, because I think a lot of women go through a fear of sorts of, mm -hmm. is my idea even worth it? Do, right. do I deserve it? What, you know, who wants to, who cares about this? And then what happens is you look up and somebody has yep. invented that very thing that you thought about. The very and thing. And they're going, I, that's what I wanted to do. But what stopped you and that other person was they didn't live they didn't live the dream. They actually did the dream. Did the dream, right. That was good yeah. little quote. Where you get that from? You stole that from somebody. No, I didn't. So and Alexa won't know. If you ask Alexa where that phrase came from, she's going to go, it came from Sherry Shepard. That's okay, the difference that was good. between a person that does, the person that does it and a person that lives it. You, there's people who, it, I think a majority of people who sit and go, I wish, I, I want to. I have this idea. And then there's that person who I would say like you, who has an idea and says, I'm going to do it. So what mm -hmm. separates and how do you get from being that person who just thinks about the dream all the time or, or you, you want it so perfect. There's another type yes. of person who's like, it's gotta be perfect. You know, I want to have five products and no. this, and you make, you make the dream so big that it's not yes. practical. And then you incapacitate yourself with yes. fear. And then you can't move forward. So how do you get from that place to being a business person? We might as well talk about it now because we started it. And I think this is good for women. Well, I think I'm a business one thing, person. Well, I think the, the, the first thing is what you said. You got to ask for help. You, you got to get somebody who's done it before. People who've made products because... Rodney has done products and he's connected with uh, manufacturers. Rodney is, in, mm -hmm. she's talking about Rodney. We, because we can't assume that everybody knows who, who are in our lives. If you looked at Kim's series on the own network from a few years back when she had adopted Joshua as a baby, Rodney came in and committed to being a father to Joshua. Am I correct, Kim? Yeah. Rodney is, is Joshua's father. dad. Joshua's dad. And so Rodney is in, is in Raising Whitley. That was Kim's show. And so Rodney is very, so Rodney is in Joshua's dad and he's in Kim's life all the time. So he was also living with Kim during the pandemic and cooking for Kim. So you said Rodney is connected what? So I'm very depressed because he left. Don't you dare get off topic. Oh, sorry. Sorry. This is a discussion. Don't you so, love how I've just turned this podcast into my own personal view? Like, this is the you view. You did. I was like, this is the view. She all serious and big words. and Be Because here's the picture. Again, ladies, being a business person, 
it's always big picture. Like what's the big picture? And my big picture is my vision, which I've made your vision. <laughs> yes. yes, you have. Is we have a we have a fan base of people who know us and they know Kim, they know Sherry, they know about Jeffrey mm -hmm. and Joshua, and we can throw around these names, but we're trying to also get uh people who don't know us. So we have to explain sometimes who people are in our right. lives and different things. And also I can keep you on track a little bit better because you tend to no, meander because no, you're 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 good at it. You're very good Why at are you still looking down? How'd you know I was doing that? You saw me? Okay. Well, first of all, stop doing your nail. We're gonna have a meeting when this is well, done. Look, 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 I only got one nail left. I only got a glue on one nail. It's the pandemic. Okay, let's talk about this. So during this pandemic, no, we're gonna talk. Let's just bring it up. Let's just bring up what happened. You're gonna send me a traveling nail woman. I call the nail woman and she's like, oh, I have COVID. Well, Sherry Shepard said you were okay. I guess everything, but Sherry got her nails done by you and she gave you to other people. Did you have the COVID then? Huh, Sherry? But you sent it to me. So now I can't get my nails done. I don't know why I'm so loud right now. But I don't know, and who are you looking at? <laughs> you looking at me. I'm looking at you. Turn your head back, back to the camera. Turn your okay. head back to the camera. Okay. Sorry, my bad. But I, the other lady got COVID. So guess what? I got to do my own nails, okay? Cause I look like I have been gardening for three months and we won't even talk about my feet. My feet look like one of them, what raptosaurus is right. Yeah, yes. don't, 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 don't you make up a real name and act like you know the name. I'll check with Alexa, I swear I will. Okay, well, since we've off the topic, but the one thing I will say our audience and fan base we're, we're, we're going to keep moving forward because Kim is not going to stay on this topic of entrepreneurship because we got a lot to say. We're going to no, have- No, go ahead. Go go ahead. I, I'm done. I'm with, I got one nail left and that's it. You want me to walk around looking like a man because you're a hater. <laughs> we're going to come back to the, the topic of entrepreneurship, being a businesswoman, how to step mm -hmm. out on faith and start a business. I have a wig line. Kim has oh. designs. Um, we- we financed and started this Two Funny Mamas podcast ourselves. We've gotten much love from it and opportunities. So we're going to have a specific podcast. If you, our viewers and listeners are interested, please in the, in the um, comments at the bottom of this podcast, please let Kim and I know if that's something that you want us to really delve deep into about being a business person, owning your own business. How do you start? How do you get past the fear? How do you know if your product is good? You know, because how do you get the confidence to go and ask? That is something we'll talk about, but we're, Kim is not interested. So I- No, 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 no. I'm very interested when we do a whole thing. I want to make sure I got all my ducks in a row. When I'm talking about it, I want to be able to give people information. And guess well, what? Yes. Oh, also you what? Sure what? Your, your, you need to make sure your nails are done before we start talking about a serious subject. Because if you look down one more time, I just want to No, look, you. look, look. I just want to show the world my nails are complete. <laughs> Still look like man hands, but they look like man hands with nails. Man hands with nails. Boom. Chris, what happened to me? I disappeared. Chris, Chris, because he opened up so the world could see the jump behind me. Chris wanted to show everybody. Now, he know I got my drawers over here. <laughs> oh, you're over here. Chris, okay, I got to say, listen. Let's keep going. We're going to keep moving. We're not on the entrepreneurial thing. I told them to put in the comments if they want to hear us do a podcast about that. I won't look down the anymore. Thing, up later. I want to explain to them the nail thing. Here is my nails. In list, in listeners, you can't see, but my nails are really like jacked up. I usually wear nails. I, oh, those I are your real nails. nails. These are my real nails. And oh, so nice. before, even Lunell, uh, the comedian, and you can see her podcast on YouTube, go subscribe. We love Lunell. Mm -hmm. You know, I had these long nails, beautiful matte looking nails. It was so pretty because I like nails. But during the pandemic, when we first got quarantined, they started coming off because I was cooking and washing dishes. And what happened because it was so long, my nails underneath were, you know, I was they were breaking to the skin. Mm -hmm. So, and so I took, I got five of them off. But then the other five on my left hand because I didn't use the hand as much, were on strong. So I have five no nails and five long nails. And then when the, they started growing, it was all of this new growth. It looked horrible. 
I couldn't yeah. get it off. I tried all that acetone. It wouldn't come off because it's that gel and with the oven. And I couldn't get it uh, off without hurting myself because I tried to pull one off and it was bleeding. So I had oh. to find a nail person. Yeah, it was bad. I had to find a nail person and, and I got recommended Lala Milan, who's a social media sensation. Follow her at Lala Milan. She recommended somebody. She said, the lady like wears a mask. She comes to your house. She does it outside. She's very, you know, I've used her. So I called the girl. I'm telling the truth, Kim. I called I'm the girl to come over to the house to try it first because Niecy wanted to know. Niecy on the show called Claws and her claws was like, woo! Right. They look so, like claws for real. They look like claws. So we, I had the girl outside on the porch. She had a mask on. I had my mask on and she did a great job. She peeled them off so gently so they didn't hurt. And she, she took them off and she wanted my nails to be healthy. She was very meticulous. So she did them orange. They were so pretty when she first did them. Now, I haven't had time to get them redone. So I haven't seen the lady in like three weeks. So don't be I, trying to add extra weeks to it, but go ahead. So I recommended her to Nisi. She went over to Nisi's house. They did it outside. She did Nisi's feet. She did Nisi's uh, hands. Nisi loved her. I recommended her to my sister a week later and my girlfriend. She's a publicist over at ABC. And they came over to my backyard. Now, everything was outside, Kim. You were the last person. I ain't talked to this lady. Let me, one of them gave her COVID. One of your little friends. <laughs> you done sent it to all them people. Now she running around talking about one of these little actresses gave her COVID. Trust me, she's mad. I'm lightheaded. I'm laughing so hard. And I'm not okay. laughing at the woman because she's, she's she's going through it and getting better now the woman wanted to do it because this was her business and she needed to make money she we were all supporting money. we were all supporting her business because she was trying to make money she had i don't know she didn't have any children but just to pay her rent she was a traveling nail person and this was like not when we first got in the pandemic like i said it was like three weeks ago uh -huh. so by the time kim got to her i didn't know and this is why i'm upset nisi didn't call me Lala did. I know. Lala, and Nisi and I talk with, as much as you and I, but she had to fly to New Orleans to get her furniture out the apartment she rented when she was doing claws. So she might have been something on her mind. But you just told me yesterday that the nail lady has COVID. We yes. weren't the only clients. So I feel bad. My sister is going to be so pissed at me when I call her and tell her, she, because my sister has, she got three kids, she's a nurse, she gotta go to work anyway. So now she gotta, she gotta stay in. Cause I, for me, I don't have anything cause it's been three weeks. So my sister now has a quarantine herself for like, it was like seven more days. She gonna be so mad at me. When I call my girlfriend Keisha, now she works from home. So she's gonna self quarantine. She's got, she's gonna be mad at me. Now everybody's mad at me. I just right, help. Cause you I'm sent the help. girl, right, yeah, you just trying to help. That's, but there's a reason why the government shut down the nail shops and the beauty shops and all this stuff. Because there's a reason we're not supposed to be up in uh, other's face doing personal stuff. You can't do six feet apart on your foot. Okay. First of all, before you start going off on me and blaming me for all of the woes of the world, <laughs> when the lady came, we about to get off the, the, this pandemic. So when she came, it was, everybody was in a dire situation, Kim. So that's why I had her outside where it's like a lot of fresh air. She was doing my feet. So she was so far away. I'm literally, my hand was like, was like this. It's so not, you don't away. have six feet of hand. Your little short self got, your arm is probably a foot long. You got little short arms, you know, okay, little stubby legs. Four, okay, I don't know why you had to bring stubby legs into the discussion. It had nothing to do with nothing. It's that nothing means she's close. It. That means the woman is up on you. And well, what I, Kim, the reason why they stopped it, so you're not going into beauty shops and, and, and nail shops, is because there's so many people. Let's not forget, when you go into a nail shop, you see how many um, massage chairs they have and, and pedicure stations and nail stations. They're waxing stations. It's because there's too many people in one place. 
It's the same thing, Kim, when you go to the grocery store and people have to wait and they only allow one in. The business doesn't stop. They just don't allow a lot of people. Let's not forget the, the idea of, co of quarantining and this pandemic and COVID. It was one nail technician and one customer. I did not have 12 people over here and three nail technicians. It was one nail technician and one customer in the fresh air. That's See, not you forget, no, you still forgetting how you catch it. It ain't got nothing to do with a bunch of people. They just trying to lower the numbers. It only takes one person with the COVID-19 yeah. to give it to you. I don't care. You could have 20 people in the room that don't have it, but you got one person in there to do your feet. You going to get it. Okay, first of all, cat lady, you're talking like a cat lady. You're talking like a cat lady who has a hundred cats and never comes out of her house because you don't want people to see your dead cats and diapers and all of this stuff laying around your house. It, the reason why they shut it down and said they wanted to flatten the curve was because it was too many people at one time. If that was the case, Kim, what you're, what you're putting on me is they would have shut down grocery stores. They would have shut down gas stations. What they're trying to do is flatten the curve is stop all of these people from gathering in one place. So we have two but, different worldviews of this no, flattening the you're, curve uh, and quarantining. You think, no, listen, you're thinking that if I'm in the grocery store, somebody's going to be up on me. No, you're going to make sure people are more than six feet away at the gas station. You're by yourself. You put your gloves on, get your gas. Ain't nobody about, on my foot. Can I interrupt? What about what? What about when, I don't know. See, when I get an attitude, I got to get close to the camera. My neck starts right. moving automatically. And when my neck starts moving, this wig is falling off. You're making me mad. What That's about, what you do wearing a cheap wig. Go ahead. Okay. There's a couple things. Cheap wigs, stubby legs that don't belong in this conversation. I apologize. I didn't. I take that. that back. You only you got see stubby. See how my on. women should run the world. You see how quick you were to apologize and God was wrong. I apologize. This yes. is the problem with why a woman should be president right now because a woman can say, "I'm sorry." Yes. Can we move forward? Men have such pride issues and they can't do that. Pride? Right you go. By the way, I don't accept your apology, but I'm saying it was great what you did. It was a great teaching lesson, but I don't accept your apology at all. So anyway, what I was saying, oh, you yeah. say, I still love you. I can still love you. Like, I'm not mad at you or anything. I'm just saying I'm not accepting your apology because you don't get okay. to apologize and I accept it and we just move on like nothing happened. Oh, you said oh, that's it, you said it, you meant it, you said it. Okay, anyway, love you. <laughs> Yes, you're six feet away. <laughs> this is when you know you've been friends with somebody too long. I still am accepting your apology. But when you're, you're six feet away, you're right in the grocery store. You're six feet away. But when you have to go through that line, they just started installing plexiglass. Glass. When you go through the line to pay for your, your purchases, you are yeah. not six feet away from the cashier. The cashier is wearing a mask. And in your case, you're wearing a full freaking hazmat suit, Kim. Yep, I got it all on. Away. That doesn't happen. When you're ordering from the deli, you're not six feet away from that person. They're not but touching my hand and my feet. We got masks she's got on. She's got gloves on, Kim. She's got gloves on. But I know you. Gloves. But I know you. Okay, I'm going to ask one question. We're going to shut it all down. Watch this question, everybody. Mm -hmm. Sherry Shepard. Yes. Did you have on a mask while the woman was doing your feet and your, and your hands? I'm going to be honest with you. So like I was saying, you- No, 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 no. You're going to answer the question. You're going to answer the question. I did. I did. No. No, we didn't hear you. I said, I'm going to be honest with you, Kim. I'm going to tell you right now. It's just like when you go into the, into the Ralph's and you have your, the grocery store, the Whole Foods, and you have your hazmat suit on. You will go through the doggone cashier. You, when you go to Rite Aid, cashier is right in front of you. You're not six feet away. So I'm saying the same thing with this woman, the nail technician. She was far away because she was doing my feet. And then she put her table on. I had my hands stretched out. I did as far as it would go. There we go. Answer question. Wait, answer. You did not answer the question, Sherry Shepard. I certainly what? did answer the question. Did you have your mask on your feet? face while the woman was doing your nails. Okay. Well, first of all, you don't have to talk so slow. 
I don't have challenges I mean, in my brain. I, I yeah, because you've been trying to go around the circle. Times and you, you're getting loud. Like your voice is going in and out. You got you got impulse control problems is one of the things. You got to learn how to calm it down. Because okay. it, be it can be taken the wrong way. It totally wiped out your apology two minutes ago. Let's now move you, on. Because are we, we you trying to change the subject? We're not moving on. No, we you are it. avoiding the question because you know you didn't have your mask on because you'll never put it on because I don't know what you think you are, Wonder Woman. You didn't have your mask on. You let the little lady do your feet and you let her do your hands and you put her in danger. Oh, you're saying I gave her COVID. Wow. <laughs> wow. Way to put that out there. Now my career, this wig, I swear to God. No, let me tell you something. You know that's what the woman is thinking. She going through her head. Who did I do? She didn't say it to me, but she kind of kind of said a couple things that made me think. Little, 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 she's like a little black girl. Um, oh, and she, how stereotypical not, are you? You assume she's Asian? <laughs> Uh, Where'd the accent uh, come from, Kim? The girl she is had Latina. Accent, she had an accent on the phone. The I don't know where she is. Her name is Olivera. Yes. She That's had a little Asian. accent. I didn't do Asian, but she had a little accent, and she was trying to explain who gave it. She thinks who gave it to her. She didn't she say. Didn't me. She I'm just saying. That I'm that saying. Completely, that completely she, said, she said no mask. I don't know how to say that in Spanish. She said no mass or no mas. Yep. She no, no. <laughs> she said she definitely said no mas. Absolutely no mas at your house. But she definitely was saying no mask. The the woman had no mask. And you're the only person who didn't wear masks. I'm just saying you might want to no, take your tip. It's very interesting here. Uh the fact that you now have told the world that I'm a carrier, which I resent, because you know I'm still out here open for a relationship. Now you just put out there that I'm a carrier. Which is, do you know how how dangerous that is to say that I am a carrier? That could have possibly give this lady COVID. She had 19 other clients she was going to, and you made her an Asian woman, and she's not. But that's not I didn't make her Asian. I'm not good at accents, but she had an accent. Sure. And what I'm trying to tell you is, you got to be a responsible adult. You are out there giving people syphilis. I mean, giving people COVID. <laughs> <laughs> that was an accident. I didn't mean that. I meant. Uh, I've got my C's and my S's. My C's and my S's. Okay, okay. I I can I cannot with you in any form. I apologize. You have said I'm a carry and I'm giving people syphilis. I got my C's and my S's mixed up. I mean, okay. you could possibly have. You could be a carrier. I don't know how to test you. For carrier. <laughs> Okay, here we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it back to first of all. Let the people know we are comics. We are not taking this light. I don't want y'all emailing us and texting us and all that. As comics, we have to make light of every situation. We, we just do. try to bring joy. You know, I'm so glad you say that because I'm gonna get on you. Because sometimes I think like people if they see us laughing hysterically at at stuff, it's not because we're you know not taking the issue at heart because we do. But there, because we're comics and a stand-up comics brain is wired a little bit different, we have we look at stuff differently. Plus, through the years of doing stand-up, Kim and I, and any stand-up comedian, Dave Chappelle or or Gary Owens or Earthquake or Jerry Seinfeld, you know, any comic, our brain is hardwired to not see everything in a linear fashion. Mm -hmm. We see hills and valleys and ups and downs and around the corner. And our brain is hardwired to go, even in the midst of hardship and yes. chaos, where, where is it funny? And that's where our, and, and it's not even that we ask ourselves the question, our brain just goes there of what's, that's another podcast of how a stand up comedian thinks. You know, we just yeah, because people get so upset with us. That before, back in the 70s and 80s, and Richard Pryor, they could say anything. Now everyone is so politically correct. They're taking the comedy out of it, being free and being raw without being disrespectful. Um, yeah, we're not. But even some comics are, you know, you had a, um, 
Who was the one that just died and he would make fun of everybody? He was a white comic. Zinger. Oh, that was my boy. You talking about Don, Don Rickles. Rickles? Don Rickles was somebody. Paul Mooney was somebody. They would pick yes. at you. Some comics make you uncomfortable. Dave Chappelle makes you think you get uncomfortable. We're, everybody's different. Kim and I, we just, our, our philosophy in life is we go through things and we just want to give it to you through the lens of humor. We want to lighten your load because it is heavy. This COVID is so heavy. People are are going, do I wear a mask? Don't I wear a mask? What's going on? And stuff just happens. And so we just want to make you laugh at the end of the day. And when you're like, we have a fan who listens to our podcast. She's a bus driver. And she texted, she was from Minnesota, Kim, where um, George Floyd was murdered. Mm -hmm. And she said, I listen to you guys when I'm you know, uh, driving my bus because I need it. I need to release and I need to laugh. And this, we get people who give us the thumbs down. Mm -hmm. Some lady commented on your Instagram and she said, you know, this is not the time for joking around and laughing. Mm -hmm. And I got really sad because I said, for God's sake, if we can't laugh, our world is going to hell in a handbasket. If yes. we just can't, because laughter, first of all, when they say that phrase, laughter is good for the soul or laughter is the best medicine. It's because it's true. No, they, it's been a study. People have lived better uh, uh, patients. They said if they incorporate laughter, they've done better. Like literally laughter does something. It releases pheromones into your mm -hmm. body. It lights up, it brings oxygen to your brain and just the <sighs> laughing like yeah. that. It truly does. It re it gives you a release. It's almost like laughter is like meditation in a way because laughter can calm you down. Have you ever had a really good like laugh, Kim, when your stomach is hurting and you just, oh, yeah. and you, you're laughing so much. And in our case, you done peed on yourself. Cause that's, yeah. that's when I know it's been good. When I done wet my pants. Oh, I, I've laughed at you sometimes. what you do last week that I hurt myself? You do some of the dumbest. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm like, what's wrong remember. with you? It, but it was so fun. Like you but do you, some of the things that make me laugh. But you're right. You, you're speaking. I wanted to uh, transition since you're talking about this right now. I want to transition and find out what you thought about David Chappelle and speaking his of laughter. Interesting. Speaking of laughter, Dave Chappelle and everybody knows who Dave Chappelle is. You know, mm -hmm. we don't even have to explain who he is. He did a he released a special that was like in secret. It came out in, like in the middle of the night on YouTube, and it's called Eight Forty Six. And 846 was the amount of time that that officer Chauvin's knee was in George Floyd's neck. And that's how long it took for George Floyd when he was murdered to die. And it affected Dave Chappelle in such a way that he had to do a stand-up special. And it made the history books because this was, this was the first stand-up special since we became quarantined. And as comic, you know, I sat there transfixed. I thought it was going to be like a bunch of jokes because that's what I know Dave Chappelle. He does a lot of funny material with uh -huh. commentary, but you know, he's still a comic and it's about the punchlines. And I was transfixed because there was a lot of stuff that just wasn't funny. He went through the litany of offenses that were done to black people. I felt Kim and the rage, the pain, the anger, the hurt, yes. the you could see it coursing through his body. And I, I was, it was three in the morning when I watched it and I could not look away. What did you think? I could not, I'm sorry to tell her, uh, I did, we were watching at the same time because you know, John and Sybil sent it to us on our little text. And I thought you told me to go to bed. I told you to go to bed because we talk all the time at night. And then I find out you watching the special. I'm watching the special. We should have just watched it together. And right. But I felt, you know, I was listening to it. And, and the thing is that David Chappelle has done, he has a reputation of being funny, but being right on point that he says things we want to say or that we're thinking. And he is so smart that we want to hear what he says. So that's why when you don't get the punchline, you don't care. It's David Chappelle. He's so brilliant with it that I felt like I was listening to a black man's thoughts. And as he was smoking those cigarettes and going through it, and he had his notebook up there. I felt like we were back in the day of Richard Pryor. 
I felt like the yeah. genius on stage that he didn't care. He was raw with it. I'm going to tell the truth. I don't care about the backlash. This is my pain. This is what I see. But at the same time, being uh, funny. And um, I, I enjoyed it. I know there were some some points in there that you that we might have been uncomfortable uh, when he was talking about that girl. But she needed to be talked about. Um, no, we're, we're talking about Candace but, Owens. But I, I think who's a... a she's a she's a black woman and she's a republican and she's for donald trump we can get to her i you know it was just interesting watching dave chappelle because he's he was like richard i don't think we've seen anything like dave since richard Pryor. chris rock yeah. is up there on that level too like i think yeah. chris rock is the greatest of all time him and to me dave chappelle and chris rock are like neck and neck in yes. what they do and how they speak because chris rock will do it anyway chris rock you know who uh, oh, they're both so wonderful that's not even the word wonderful is not it they're genius and yeah. dave chappelle got up there and it was not many punchlines when i was watching and he had his notebook it took him so long to light that cigarette do you want to go in with me to get him a lighter from tiffany to see because that i was like that big lighter is i swear i'm going through the do this camera and snatch the lighter but i think that it took mm -hmm. Dave Chappelle so long to get into it because it was so heavy. Mm -hmm. And in his mind internally, he's trying to figure out how do I even get into this? Because once I go there, yep. there's no stopping me and there was no coming back. So he kept looking at the notebook. He kept drinking the water out of the out of the cup, playing with the, the cigarettes. And I think because it was so much, and because it's Dave Chappelle, that audience didn't care. But it was just brilliant in the fact that he took as a stand up, because we've been taught so much, it's about that punchline. You know, ain't nobody yeah. gonna sit there and watch you just wax on. But because it's Dave Chappelle and he's earned that right, and you've seen Dave, he's Dave, earned that right. you know yeah. that Dave has given you brilliance in the form of laughter. Yes. And then you really wanna hear what he has to say, especially as a black man with what's going on today. So I was transfixed, I thought it was pretty brilliant. Interestingly enough, Chris, who is the voice of God, Chris, say hi so people will know who you are. Know who you are. Hello, ladies. Hey, Chris. I oh. love Chris. And I'm going to put the disclaimer out because I know Chris is going to come. He white. So we got a Chris, little bit different. We play that Chris different. white boy, a real white, white boy. Too. I do want to say Chris is a com comics connoisseur. So I yes. do want to say. Chris knows comedy like the back of his hand. Chris has interviewed so many comedians on his, what's the name of your podcast, Chris? Uh, it's We Are Live. We what? Are Live on his- We Are Live. We Are Live podcast. So he, Chris does podcasts for Alonzo Bodden and he worked, you know, and so he he just, he knows everybody. So- Yeah, Bowden. We're not talking about Chris Bowden. like he's just a white boy that don't know nothing. I'm not gonna right. put him there, he, but he is a white boy. <laughs> so, <laughs> Chris said, when he was watching Dave Chappelle and Chris, his first stand-up show that he went to was Dave Chappelle, if I got that right, Chris. Yeah, so I'm in uh, Columbia, Missouri. I guess it was like 18, at, uh, and it, it's kind of embarrassing to, to compare the, all the uh, the terrible comedy shows and small ones I've been to at this point, or big uh -huh. names and small bars. But at this point, uh, 18 or 19 at the Hearn Center, Columbia, Missouri, it was Chappelle at his most popular, like at his height. That was the very first true stand-up show I ever saw. And he was not talking the way he's talking now, was he? Uh, I probably didn't realize he was, if he was. But it was a lot of, uh, it was a lot of, he felt like, uh, it was almost like play the hits. And he made fun of himself for playing the hits, right? It was when his TV show was huge. Oh, oh, huge oh, oh. Show. So, okay. okay. Yeah. Now, Chris, in, in, and that's Chris from Midcoast Media. He helps with us with our podcast. He's amazing. Made the comment that he thought Chris Rock may have been inebriated. Dave Chappelle. Like he said, did you, did you David think Chappelle. that Chris may have David had a Chappelle. Bit of David Chappelle. Oh, did I say Chris? Oh, now I'm put that on Chris Rock. He said, did you think Dave Chappelle may have had a little bit to drink before he started? And I thought, no, he was so, it was so many feelings as a black man that were coursing through his body. Because the one thing we do as comics, when something happens to us, we want to get on that stage and talk about it. Yes. Anyway, I think it, I think just going through this as a black man, because in his special, he mentioned that he cried like a baby when Kobe died. That's why he didn't appear at the Grammys. So 
as a black man watching George Floyd murder, there's a way you, I feel as a black woman, there's a way I feel as a black mother, there's a way, everybody has different feelings. It's still horror and rage, but as a black man, it's just something different. So I thought when I saw Chris, sorry, they're both in my hand. When I saw Dave Chappelle, that it was just so many emotions coursing through his body because his hand was shaking. Do you remember when he was trying mm -hmm. to light the cigarette? Yeah. And I, I not, at one point thought he was drinking. I thought it was those raw emotions. What'd you think, Kim? I felt, you know, I didn't even notice that because David Chappelle sounds like that all the time. As far as I'm concerned, every time we hear David Chappelle, he didn't sound any different than he sounded on his other special. And with me and you've been with David in the clubs late night. David be on the stage for three hours and you Six will sit hours. there and listen to him. Yeah, he can go. And he yeah. so to drink, he's not up there with a drink. So he sounds the same. So if you were up there with a drink, I'd be like, okay, he's been drinking the whole time. But no, he sounds the same. Um, that could be my red know? cup bias as well. I see red cup and I see a guy and I put myself in there. I'd be like, I would have had probably two, <laughs> too, too, too many spirits beforehand because he is talking about such heavy stuff. So immediately I yeah. went to my own dependency and, uh, and, <laughs> and figured that. But yes, the red, the red cup influenced me. I, I will I say that also. It was a red cup. We didn't see the red cup. It was right I there. I see. He, he was <laughs> in the middle of a field in Ohio. You got a red cup. Oh, Typically, I'm oh. thinking beer or, or liquor or something. And, and where right was he there. in Ohio? Where was he, uh, Chris, Spring, in Ohio? Spring Valley or something like Spring Valley, Ohio. Uh, I thought it was on his property. Kim, he had the red cup. That was all he kept messing with, fiddling with at the beginning. And I, I agree with you, Chris. Might have had a cup in there. When people have a red cup, they do have liquor in the cup. So I'm not saying you're wrong. Um, he could have had a couple drinks because also to kind of calm him down. I don't think he, even if he had a, a drink, yeah. it would have been enough to. Because I drink before I go on stage. I have a glass of wine. And and it is. I'm you about, you're going to be an alcoholic by the time you finish out your comedy career. I've been day. doing it since I was able to drink. Now, my mama you know said. My mama told me, just make that money. We'll get you some help later. <laughs> See, this is what I'm talking about when you do comedy. Kim is an alcoholic. So. <laughs> hey, real quick, uh, Yellow, Spring, right. Yellow Springs, Ohio is where Dave is uh, is living, I believe, right now. So, Oh, he has his farm there. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. been living there. After he got that 50 million, he rolled out. And it, but not even 50 million, like Netflix gave him like 140 million. So I thought oh. that stage was like his bathroom, literally. No, that was ridiculous. I was like, where is he in the barn? So I didn't even know it was a Netflix special. I thought it was just something he threw up on YouTube. So did I, but you know, Netflix is behind it and producing it, I think. But the amount of money David Chappelle has, people had to go through checkpoints. You know how much money you gotta have to go through checkpoints? You just freaking get out your car and you at my back door. That's your, that's a checkpoint. So it but was on his property. He it built may the have been or may not have been. We don't know. And, and he probably took everybody's phone. Sure, I'm sure he took everybody's phone. Temperature in the phone. But it to going back to. All right, hey, real quick, real quick. Here we go. Beaver Creek, and I thought that I didn't. It sounds like a made up name. So 846 was filmed in Beaver Creek, Ohio. Uh, this is on June 6th in front of a socially distanced audience wearing Chappelle Brandon masks. Oh, June Beaver 6th. Creek. I don't know where that is. I'm from Ohio. I, I ain't never heard of that in my life. I've heard people refer to you yours as Beaver Creek, but I don't know where it is. Okay. Turning my she mic off. Joke. She, did you hear what I said, Kim? Huh? what you say? No, what you said, you got a Beaver Creek. I don't know where Beaver Creek is because I am the beaver. What you say? Because I've heard people refer to yours as a Beaver Creek, but it's not even funny. As long as you said Beaver Creek and not be be a, a Beaver Ocean or Beaver River, it's a creek is a very small body of water. So Beaver Creek is my, uh, that is my code name when people come over. Too much? Is that your, is that your Instagram name? <laughs> I am Beaver It's my creek. stripper name. Ladies and gentlemen, coming to you live. Beaver Creek. This is where I love you. Because you took a joke that had died a really slow death and you revived it and made me laugh. Because I wanted you to let it go because the, the joke just had, had I fizzled. I couldn't you know, let it go. It was funny. That's what the comic you I'm have. half paying and attention. I'll pour some more water in my cup. I have to tell you to stop looking down. When we have our post meeting, 
after the show, I'm gonna have to Barbara Walters on you. It's not. I was pouring get- water in my cup. I gotta replenish because we be on here for long periods of time. We've been on here for what an hour and a half. I got a kid. I got life. I gotta go dye my gray hair. It's a lot going on over here. <laughs> How long have we been on here, Chris? Chris, are we talking about our our pre show hangout podcast. mixed mixed with the actual podcast, or do you want do you want the actual the podcast actual time? Podcast. How long? <laughs> yeah. Your mic is, uh, is mine. No, hers. Okay, I can fix that. It's at one hour and five minutes. Oh See, my gosh. I know. Trust me, I'm a time girl. Well, I'm not I'm on time. Hour and five minutes. We even talked about. I got a list of stuff that we're supposed to talk about. I was trying to get you on task. I was like, David Chappelle, let's go to the next thing. But you want to be? You are a little Barbara Walters. You just be. Uh, and then let's talk about the butterflies. Now the uh, <laughs> mono butterfly. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the deal. We don't have a producer for this podcast. I am the producer. Yeah. <laughs> and so producer and I got to run it, but I don't have a note. So I don't know where we going. <laughs> That's the problem. You produce it. I have no list. I have nothing. So I don't know. I you gotta, gotta, about I gotta away. Chris. Do I, do I just need to start running point? Like, is that? <laughs> yeah, then we need to go to the next, the next. I, you know what? I'm not sure where we went left. I'm telling you, like, this is another thing. And this is another, I, th- that I really, I want to go back to Dave Chappelle, but okay. I just want to make this point because we talk all the time and we, we have so many points we have to make again, ladies, because a big majority of our fan base is women. When you think about how do I start? What if it's not perfect? Who's going to do, you just start. Like we're, Kim and I are doing two funny mamas podcasts. We funded this ourselves. We're doing everything. If it wasn't for Chris from Big Coast Media doing this, because we don't know the technical aspects of it, but we, everything is not perfect. We don't have producers. We don't have bookers. Mm-hmm. We don't have cameramen. We don't have makeup artists. We, which is why my wig keeps sliding off. We, we just, oh my gosh, like, Wow, that's why funny. did you put a bobby pin in your wig? Who does that? Because it's too heavy. Like it's this is one of these cheap wigs I got off Instagram, and it's, and it's to your heavy. butt, huh? And it's down like, your butt, which is crazy. I know. Look how long it is. I let me show you how long this. It's ridiculous. Is. I look like look, a which, woman who owns a bed and breakfast. Like, no, say you look like a teacher. How long you been teaching? Twenty years. <laughs> So I don't wear wigs, but all my wigs that I typically wear, sorry for all of the noise effects as I'm sitting back down in my chair, all the wigs that I wear they're I had to wash them. They're hanging. It was just too much. So I found this old wig that I got for like $19.99. If you bought five of them, like they were $29.99, but if you bought five of them, then there were $19.99. So I never had a long wig. So I said, well, let me try it. It's cheap. You can see the the little wefts, the little thread and stuff in the back, but you don't have to see the back, but it's so long. So because it's so heavy, it's pulling. It's pulling, but you could put bobby pins. I have pins bobby in pins in it, but it's pulling. And every time you either A, make me upset or I laugh, it falls. Why are you pulling your shirt? Cause I'm looking, I bought this at Walmart yesterday. I went Walmart. Well, you, I went got Walmart. A cheap, you got something cheap on too. <laughs> it was $9. It was a $9 shirt. How? How is that shirt stretching so much? It's still stretch at nine dollars. And then when I went to the register, was what I love about people at Walmart. The man at the register was was ringing me up, and then he brought his shirt up. He was like, "This is nine dollars." He was impressed. I was like, "What? You work here?" He was like, "You got a nine dollar shirt?" I was like, "I did. What a bargain!" I said, "I'm going to come back and get the rest of the colors." <laughs> I know because it's nine dollars, and if you buy five of them, then it goes to three. Right. So we're going back to Dave Chappelle because we're not going to skip over. That's the producer me. We're not going to skip over Dave Chappelle so easily. We both thought that the special was brilliant. I thought that the raw, just so many emotions and how he expressed it, expressed it was brilliant. You know, it's, it's a trip because he just told his truth in a raw, unfiltered fashion. And he, I just appreciated it because in him telling his truth, I felt the same way. 
but he gave me some nuggets that I didn't know. He talked about things like, you know, a lot of times these rogue cops who go and then they begin killing cops. In two instances, both of the men were former cops and they were black and they started killing cops. And he said something where it's like they did exactly what they were trained to do in Iraq, which is fight terrorism. And wow. he compared, you know, killing the police to fighting terrorism. Now where I, you know, I took it for how he said it, the practical of me, because I know police officers, T Tisha Campbell's brother is a former police officer. And there are some really good police officers. And Dave was not saying that all yeah, they are. are bad. Mm -hmm. Huh? I said, they yeah, there are some good some, ones. And you, you, like, you, you have a little boo that's a police officer. So I don't think, you know, some people are like, you know, he's saying all oh, police officers are bad. No, he's not. But it's just like the good ones have to root out the bad ones and that code mm -hmm. of brotherhood and all of that stuff. So he was just saying this truth. I thought it was brilliant. Um, and things that he was saying, his, it was interesting because 846 was also the time that he was born. Did you get that? He was yes. born at 846. 846 was the amount of time it took for George Floyd to die when he was murdered by the cop in Minnesota. He, I mean, it was so many references that he made. I couldn't even keep up, but watching him as a stand-up, I was just transfixed because he became a philosopher in that moment. It wasn't about yeah. punchline. It was about being a philosopher. And he took the task, Don Lemon, because oh, Don sure Lemon did. was in and was calling out celebrities going, you're not doing enough. We, you know, we, you, we need, you need to show people that you're supporting the cause and these young people. And if you remember, and people who are fans of our podcast, we called out Don Lemon before Dave Chappelle called out Don Lemon. You remember that, Kim Whitley? Sure and, if you, if you, and if you want to hear the segment where we called out Don Lemon, you can go to our Instagram at Kim Whitley or at Sherry E. Shepard, or we have a clip on our YouTube channel, Two Funny Mamas, where we called out Don Lemon, and you can see what we said. Dave Chappelle called him out for almost the same reasons, but he went forward because his whole point of view was, I was hoping you would call me out, Dave. His whole point of view was, people who are marching and protesting don't want to hear what a comedian has to say because the streets are telling you what it needs to say. Now, I didn't oh. agree. Well, I got what you were saying, Dave. He was saying, Every I don't, door. Hey, that's what you're going to yell in the middle of the podcast. Somebody's knocking on the door. Jeff, uh, forget the door. Well, that means your gate is open, first of all. Um, that means somebody's got the code to the gate. So I didn't necessarily no. agree that people don't want to hear what a comic or a celebrity has to say. They want to But he meant them. in context, like he meant in context, like comedy wise. They don't want to hear any jokes right now. Not when it's hot, not when it's just happening, Don. They don't want to hear us cracking any right. jokes. We just talked about that. They want to hear us philosophizing how we feel about it, but they don't want, he said, the streets. I, I understood what he was trying to get at at that. But yes. is it to say, I think Don Lemon wanted to know what we were doing, what was the work that we're doing. Yeah, Don Lemon wanted to know. He, he, he We felt Don Lemon made himself the arbiter of who is doing enough for this. Yeah. I got to get the door to talk. I can't, what in the world? See, this is the problem with her. Sherry just gets up, but she talks about me. She talks about me doing my nails, which I did finish. I was looking down a lot. I do look down a lot because I feel like I'm a multitasker, Sherry. I don't feel like I just sit there. See, this is this. Stop yelling on the podcast. Look at that long hair. It looks crazy. Who was it at the door? It's Jeffrey is Kenny. Oh, okay. Um. Jeffrey's, I, Jeff, one of Jeffrey's mentors, Kenny is here. Hi, Kenny. Come here, hey, Kenny. Hey, Kenny. Got a lot of women. Y'all want y'all to meet Kenny because yeah, we got we a lot of women Kenny. on this podcast. And, you and know, they, they, women like that you haven't shaved. Come on over. He so hasn't Kenny, shaved? No, he hasn't shaved. Let me see, Kenny. Come on in here in the camera. Let me see your unshaven COVID look. Oh, he got his mask on. Wait, you got to come in. You got to come in. In the... Oh, yeah. Hey, hey Kenny. Hey. Look at you looking all handsome and fresh. 
<laughs> Watch out. Carry, Carrie's a carrier. Be careful. If you don't stop that. Thank you. Kenny is. Ugh. What do you do that for? <laughs> Jeff, Jeffrey's coming out. Oh, oh anyway. sorry. No, she not. Keep your mask on, though, Kenny. Keep your he mask, had mask on. I had, take, I had him take it off so the women could see him because Kenny is single. Oh. He's self employed. He's single. He's six. How? Are you six eight? I'm six nine. He, oh, geez, Louise. Woo! He's six nine. <laughs> He's he, got six nine. he got some big feet. <laughs> Kim said you got big feet, Kenny. Kenny is. Uh, you know, because I, you know, we, we profiling. So, so Kenny is one of Jeffrey's mentors. Remember I told you when Jeffrey turned um, 14, yeah. I sat about six black men around him to give him life advice yes. because I felt it was so important. And there are certain men who are in Jeffrey's life who like committed to Jeffrey to walk with him. And so when I'm going through stuff, I call his mentor. So it, we, he kind of eased up because Jeffrey's going through this thing at 15. He's not telling me everything. He don't want to talk to me. And so I'm able to call Kenny and say, can you come spend time with Jeffrey? Cause there's something on his mind and he's not talking to me. And I got, I have to be able to protect this boy, but he's not telling me anything. So that's you how go I found through, out. You got to go under his bed. You got to go through his phone. You got to do yeah, everything my mama used to do to me. Oh, you can well, find out what's going on. Go through yes, that computer. But I, can't, I, I can't find out what's in his mind. Like I found, ooh, de oh, dear. Look, look, see, that's that cheap wig. It will grab an ink pen every the time. Pen got caught in my wig. I did. That's how I found out that he was on um, Snapchat. Okay. And then I, was able, I called his mentor. He's got two. Three. And I said, you have to talk to because he didn't want he didn't want to talk to me. He didn't have a meltdown. And so they were so Kenny comes in and really gets on him about respecting his mom. The fundamental because Kenny used to play basketball overseas. The fundamentals of basketball. Kenny's also a cameraman. I met him when I had my black bachelor show. Um you know, with I had a black bachelor, oh. match made in heaven it was called. And he was a cameraman, and that's how we met Kenny. And Jeffrey really took to him. And so Kenny's been in our life. He's like a brother, he's family. So, but he is single ladies. So and he's six nice. How now, long you been a picture single together, and one why? of y'all be cut off. It, you, you're not gonna be in a picture together. You just have to know that. So if you're dating Kenny and you go to yeah. do a selfie, your head not gonna be in the picture. So, I got some friends to hook Kenny. How old is Kenny? What's his age range? Kenny. Because I got some old bitty friends, man. They they take Kenny. What's yeah, his age? Call, you can ask your question, Kenny. I want to know what his age range is for women. Now, if you want real young women, I don't know. I got a couple, never, but you know, I don't look at Kenny that way. So I've never asked what his hopes and dreams are for women. Well, you but got I girlfriends that need a man, especially during this COVID. Once he get tested, I did not his age. What's his age range for women? Kenny is, he's six nine. That's why I say, ladies, if you date Kenny, you not gonna be in the picture. Kenny is six nine. He's thirty eight years old. Oh, 38. He's okay, 38. that's good. Kenny. What? But what's what his you, asthma? What are you looking for in a woman? Oh Jesus! You done went too detailed. Kenny, well, I didn't even know. Kenny, he, Kenny, Kenny scoot to your left a little. <laughs> let's get it. There it is. Let's get a good look. There you go. What's up, Kenny? I, literally, I want y'all to know when Kenny stands up, he his head will hit my ceiling. But Kenny Kim wants to know. I didn't even ask if you're looking to be in a relationship. You might be happy being single. So, but for purposes of this podcast, you are looking for a relationship. So we don't have to go. So, what are you looking for in a woman? Well, with my age and my entrepreneurial, what I'm doing, yes, I, I'm looking for a woman that is not ready to kind of settle down right away and kind of hustle with me, kind of. Oh, you're looking for a hoe. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, that's not what he said. <laughs> oh, I oh, I couldn't hear him. It's because he's away from the mic. That's what it sounded like to me. She. What did you say? Uh, what kind of woman you looking no, for? No, I'm just saying I'm an entrepreneur. So right now I'm not looking to settle down. So I'm looking for a woman that kind of shares the same oh. goals, of uh -huh, working uh -huh. hard and a hoe with vision. Okay. <laughs> a hoe with vision. What Kenny said in plain speak, ladies, is he's not looking to settle down. 
because his main focus is getting to where he wants to be in his business because okay. he's self-employed. So he's really focused on getting ahead in his business. That's the thing about men. Like they got it. They're defining their, who they are and they're, uh -huh. you know, he's trying what's to get to the that. Age range? Kenny, what's the age range? See, women my age, they're looking to settle down and to have kids right now because uh -huh. I, most women, this is the age that they kind of want to have kids. To yeah, that's what they say. They start to panic. So when you say age, age rage, it'll be an age where it's like, that's 30, that's 30 to 60 right or under 20. I need to know. He either want I got real young or he wants somebody our not age. Real young. Right. I got I, some women on my roster, Kenny. I got some women on my roster. They don't, they, they not really, huh? What, what's happening? This is what I'm saying. This, this is the women that are going to work for Kenny. The ones that are in their uh, 20s because they're not looking to settle down. They just want to have fun. That probably is not going to work for you, Kenny, because you're so focused on your work and they want to go out and just be hanging out and have a good time. You, The age, and I'm being transparent, that's going to work for you is a woman who's older because typically, Chris, you can put Kim back on the screen because I need to look at her crazy face. And see if she agrees. <laughs> no, I was looking at Kenny. I was sizing him up. Okay, go ahead. So typically, is is Kenny still in the picture, Chris? No, it's fine. I got Kenny. Okay. Kenny, you go back to business. We're gonna talk about you because you need okay, an so older yes. woman. Kenny. Thank you, everybody. Kenny. This is Kenny. Great work, He's Kenny. Like, Thank you, Kenny. Yeah. Kenny yeah. need an older woman. Look Kenny, how Kenny. Kenny. Stand up. Look how tall and he is. Up, Kenny. Forty-five and up. Now I got a couple forty-eight-year-olds. Yeah. They don't and look Kenny. forty-eight. They don't feel forty-eight. I got you. You need but somebody who's older. But they don't look but, it. But that's what I'm saying, though. That's what I'm saying. And Kenny actually can stay in the picture. And that's sweat. He was playing basketball outside. It's very hot. Mm -hmm. So oh, on the shirt. The, the reason why Kenny the needs sweat. somebody. Uh -huh. Stop talking for a minute, Kim, so okay, I can explain sorry. this. Sorry, and sorry. Chris, you can put both of us on the screen because I'm going to do a screen grab of this. The reason why Kenny needs a woman. Kenny and Sherry or Sherry and Kim? Sherry, Kenny, and Kim. You're, <laughs> he might okay. Do you're going to. All right. Kenny. Kenny, you're going to get right behind Sherry and you're going to look over her right COVID ear if you get behind her. Don't be get... putting that out there. You and right, Chris think you're funny. Hang okay. On. Kim and Chris think they look. All right, mean. get on get on her left shoulder. Kenny, get on her left shoulder. This will be easy. Hey, there he is. There you go. Little, you have to get closer. Little closer in. Little, little oh, nuzzle maybe with her nose. Don't breathe, Kenny. Don't breathe, Kenny. You don't want to yeah, There don't. you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's get yeah, those two fun. Right <laughs> he needs yeah, a two funny mama's mask. Y'all make me. Yeah, we need a two funny mama's mask. Oh, that's a good one. We're going to start that. This is what I would say to Kenny is that you need to get a woman that's older because typically an older woman does not want to be, you know, that settling down. She's okay with having a relationship because she's trying to do stuff. She's got her own thing going. She's usually got her own finances together she got she don't want to have no kids because the older woman's already had her kids so you literally like my uterus is in the glove compartment <laughs> in the car so we, you don't even have to worry you go to an older woman and go you know i want a baby she's gonna be like baby bye um, right we're not not looking to have any kids typically you know she's she's just not she's doing her own thing so she just needs you when she needs you and then you can go on we're not looking to be all spooning and holding hands and that needy thing. Most older women's like, look, it's a certain need and that's it. Bye. But she will help you. She's going to help you with your entrepreneurial stuff. Older woman, going, she, going, she got your back. She got a couple coins to invest. And, you know, you got to come over at a certain time, but you're going to have to get up. In the morning, we don't need that comment. The kids got to get up. We got the kids ready. Kids got to get up. I need you to leave out the back door before you wake up. And I'm going to make you some good. And I'm going to make you some eggs and toast. That's the thing. When you get with an older woman, you do not have to worry that she's going to want to lay in bed all day because she got stuff to do. No. And I don't, we got younger fans, but I don't have to say it. It's not even she got stuff to do. An older woman got shit to do. And you right. stand in bed, laying up in that bed. You know what it bring up in an older woman? You lay. Oh. So we want you to go. We don't want you laying up in that bed beyond right. breakfast. Get out. Go we do turn, your own thing. Yeah, we, we get turn irritated. Into a mama. Don't we turn into a yeah. mama like, what you going to do today? You got to get up and get this. You got to grab life, baby. You got to get up, honey. Why are we still in bed? Honey, you should have been up before the crows came up. Don't ask an older woman to stay. Can we just stay in bed all day? 
No, we get so much. I gotta do laundry. Right. I gotta help with this homework. No, right. mm-hmm. and bed so, and do what all day? My sciatica acting up. I ain't gonna. Yeah, if you be think you he, it, here's the foreplay where we go with this. If you think you're gonna be in bed with an older woman having sex the whole time, oh, you'd have lost no. your damn mind. No, no, <laughs> no. We're gonna talk about making this money. We're gonna eat some food. We're gonna and we're gonna we're gonna take care of business. Now I can see you later on the night after everything is done. About nine after nine o'clock, you can come back over. But during the day, I got runs to make people to see things to do. Things to do that don't include you. Right. So really, for what you're trying to accomplish in your life and where you're trying to go and you're trying to, you know, really submit your business, an older woman will work for you. Don't you think, Kim? Yeah. So holler at your girl, Kitty. I got some on my roster. Not you. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Not me. I got my roster, Kitty. I got my roster. I mean, we know each other. I'm too close to the family. But I mean, one night wouldn't be bad with them, Sherry. I should take them out for a test drive before I, I send them to my friends. That ain't that ain't right. I mean, how can I talk about them? How can I be a good saleswoman if I have not bought, tried the product? Huh? <laughs> I can't. I can't. You probably could leave at this moment, Kenny, because you blush. Kenny, I appreciate you. Kenny's also you from. Know. Are you from Jamaica? No. I'm uh, from yes, Jamaica. I got all kinds. I got I got Mexican girls, black girls. All my friends, all my friends, they got jobs and supple skin. Oh, sorry. Kenny was born in Antigua. Oh, he's nice. an island. Yes. He's from the islands. Does he have an accent? But his family is from Barbuda. So it's where is Barbuda? Barbuda. Barbuda. It's that ain't not Barbuda. No, it's not no. Barbados. No, it's Antigua and Barbuda. It's Antigua and Barbuda. We ain't nice. traveled enough. A lot of people been to Antigua, but Barbuda is the sister island. It's real secluded. It's private. Princess Diana used to go there a lot when she was alive to get. Some oh, we going, we going, we're going and bringing the girls. All the women. You know what I? You know what I think? I think this Negro is a prince of Barbuda, and he ain't telling nobody. No, no, that's what they do. I'm telling. I think he's some royalty. Oh, look, we gotta end the podcast because my stomach is growling. So is mine. But I just had to introduce you to Kenny. Bye. That was fun. Kim, Kenny said it was good to see you again. It was good seeing you too, uh, uh, Kenny. Holla at your girl. I got I you. To introduce you. When you it, it reaching out, we have to do another podcast on having mentors in your child's life. Uh, Kenny's yes. very important to, into our family. And he's like, he's just like a family member. We love him so much. I think we, we never finished. Can we just friend. finish up Dave Chappelle? Can we just Oh my finish God, we're going back to Dave Chappelle. We talking <laughs> about dating younger men. Can we're going to do a pack podcast on dating younger Kim, men. We please? Huh? We're going to have a, po- we're going to have a post meeting. This is sick of us. Let's do finish, wrap up David Chappelle so I can go get something to eat because my stomach is growling. You know, I ain't got but three, four points to eat during the day for my I WW. Said, my, this wig is given out, and I, I didn't even get to talk about the wig and the cheapness. And I had a really funny story, but I just want to finish up Dave Chappelle because we thought Dave Chappelle was bringing it, and Dave Chappelle took to task Don Lemon. I felt like Don Lemon, when he addressed it, walked back, walked, walked back his comments about being a judge of celebrities and um, mm-hmm. he acknowledged it and he got on Don Lemon, but we did it first. So you can see what we said to Don Lemon about calling out people and being a judge of what folks do behind the scenes. Uh, I, the, one of the other issues that I had or thing that concerned me about Dave Chappelle, he took to task Candace Owen, who is a black woman. She's a Republican. She's far right. Like she's to most black people, she just goes against black people. She made a very incendiary statement about George Floyd. She said, George Floyd is not her hero. He was a thug and she refused to acknowledge him as such, which really upset a lot, the great majority of black people. She is for, she loves Donald Trump. She wears those make America great hats again. You can see her and T.I. square off if you Google it. Candace Owen is not really liked by a lot of black people. She, cause she spouts off stuff that's just, it's crazy. And I look at her and go, who hurt you, Candace? Why do you, why do you hate your people so much? Because excuse me, the things that she says is so, 
it goes against just who we are as a people. So anyway, he took her to task for that statement that she made. And he said, we're not looking for heroes, the black community. But when they held their knee in his in George Floyd's neck, he became a hero. And you reducing him to a thug and, and yeah. you know, he had a prior record. So what, Candace, if George Floyd had a prior record? It does not mean he should have died. If that money had been counterfeit, it does not mean he should have died. Why? What it does Why? mean is he should have just been arrested and taken in until they could have proven otherwise. It doesn't mean that he should have been beat up in the car while he was handcuffed, pulled out of the car while he was handcuffed, beat up again, even though he was subdued with four officers and one put his knee into George Floyd's neck. That has nothing to do with him having prior record or him being a thug. Because there's also pictures that he got Jesus in his life and that he was trying yes. to help other people find God. Nobody is perfect, Candace Owens. I'm not perfect. Kim is not perfect. You're not perfect. So to be the judge, I, I heard what you said. I see you oh, now that you are perfect. Sorry. Candace Owens' statement enraged me because you're pandering yeah. to this base of people who want to hear you. I myself think Candace Owens, I'm not going to relegate her to the to the level of crazy. She's not crazy. I believe Candace Owens is very strategic about what she does. And yep. what she says, and I believe Candace Owens is an opportunist. And I know that Candace Owens, when she put out that statement about George Floyd, she knew damn well she was going to inflame everybody. She knew it and she knew darn well the base that she is pandering to was going to repost her comments, repost that video, and it was going to go viral. But where I think Candace is dangerous is that people on the right look at her and go that's how black people feel and then they say well look at what that black girl said so it must be true george floyd no matter what happened no matter his priors they should not have had him die you don't die because you have prior offenses you right. don't die because you might have passed counterfeit money because you know what that means candace owens you should have died if you tried to rent an apartment and they wouldn't rent to you because you was black you, you don't and i'm not saying candace owens should die Please. no no but you shouldn't die because of your blackness you shouldn't die you because, shouldn't of, the die because of your blackness candace that's why i felt like you know damn well it's not about george floyd being a hero now what has happened is is it, a movement has started because the the, the proverbial phrase a straw broke the camel's back yeah. with George Floyd. Yes. Because we had it with Breonna Taylor. It was Ahmaud Aubrey. It was uh, jo Botham Jean. It was Trayvon Martin. It was, who's the little boy that was eight years old? Um, oh, in Cleveland, where he got shot with the play gun, right. Forgive me, it's Sandra Tamir Rice. Rice. Tamir, Tamir Rice. Rice. Thank you, Chris. Yes. This by the time we got to George Floyd and we had to watch this man get murdered over and over and over with a man who put his, a, a police officer who is vowed to serve and protect and put his hand in his pockets and his knees on his brother's neck. It was a movement. It was rage. It was frustration. It was anger. And Candace Owen, you refuse, you refuse to acknowledge that and you go to the base. So I, I, I have my feelings about Candace and you already know how I feel because I didn't yep. say some of my next is moving because I look at you, Candace Owen, as you are my sister. You look no, like my sister. No, 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 Kim, no, no. What I'm saying, you're a black woman is what I mean by right. my sister. You're a black woman. And I look at you and I, and in my heart, I go, you've completely turned away and you're pandering to this white base. Because but you act like that's something new, honey, on the plantation. Didn't we always have the one that ran to the massa? Who massa? The Negress is getting away. She Candace just one of those. Candace Owens would have been one of those women on the plantation who yep. wanted the white man's favor, her white mass's favorite favor. Yeah, exactly. And she would have told on the people like us who would have been trying to escape. Candace Owens, yep. we believe are self-hating black woman. You are. Yes. But what where and and that's an that's a discussion that we could have about Candace Owens. I'm profoundly hurt because deep inside we yeah, you say, you're giving her way too much credit and saying her name way too much. She is loving this. So let's not say her I'm name sure anymore. This is what I want to say about Dave Chappelle. I know you're hungry. 
Yeah, I they know you're going on and on. Chris is you know, you know, when I get passionate. When I get passionate I know, about but stuff. You're using words I wrote down. I want to go back and ask you what they mean because that ain't a word. Let me just, go ahead. I'm begging you. Let me just finish this point. Dave Chappelle addressed Candace Owens, and that's what he said to her. We weren't looking for a hero, but when they put their neck in his knee, we got a hero. He addressed her, and he said that she's so spouting so much stuff is just ignorant. He addressed it. What I didn't like was mm -hmm. he called her a, where's Jeffrey? I'm going to say some words that are that you're not to repeat. Right. Bye-bye, yeah, baby. Bye, Kenny. Yeah. He called Candace Owens a cunt. He yes. called her like a bitch. He, a said bitch, her, yeah. he said, I don't know if kids are watching us. So I'm not going to say to her. He said her P-U-S-S-Y stank. And he said, I don't know if she got a stanky P-U-S-S-Y, but if I find out, I'll let you know. I'll be like Azalea Banks and tell it. And Azalea Banks had her own issues and uh, with, with that, where people were saying that. But what I didn't like as a woman, even though mm -hmm. I don't agree with Candace Owens, even though she makes me so angry, why do you have to relegate? Well, I'm, as a woman, we're always relegated to cunt, bitch, stanky bitch. Like, give me, dress her down, Dave, because you got the brilliance and the articulation yeah. to unpack Candace Owens and put her back together again. Why reduce a woman to that? And I understand I don't agree with nothing Candace says. But I get that, and you get that all the time, where people will come at us and call us names based on what our body looks like. I always, when people are upset with me, this is the first thing they say, and it's always men. You fat, boxy bitch, because I don't have no hips. You fat, boxy bitch, you, you bitch ass cunt. And I look at these comments and I go, that's all you, you, that's the only way you can articulate what you yeah. don't like about me, what I've said, you don't, that you don't agree with what I said by calling me a fat, boxy bitch. Um, you going towards my looks, that's all you got? Like, I can't respect that. But if you right. can intelligently and articulate, articulately say to me, this is what I'm like when you said such and such. If we can yes. have a debate about that. So, and as women, I, I think so more. Mm -hmm. men go to that, that point all the time with women. They want to reduce us to your pussy stank. You a cunt. You a bitch. Like you want to dismiss us. And I, I get that's what Dave Chappelle was doing when he was dismissing Candace. Mm -hmm. As a woman, I just can't go with it. I'm a woman. And two young girls are still hearing you. We had the problem with Snoop Dogg. I was that's gonna say the same with thing with Snoop. Snoop it was Dogg so did the same thing with Gail Two. King. And I understand yeah. in Snoop Dogg's passion of wanting to protect Kobe and Vanessa and the kids. I got it. And and what Kobe had done for us, he went after Gail, but it became you dog face bitch. Like it was so, and as a black woman, I was like, wow. Come on. And Snoop is a wordsmith. Snoop. I'm sure he could have put together some Snoop other words. Wordsmith. He's a rapper. He puts stuff together like yummy. And so as I'm looking at Snoop, I hurt as a black woman because you know right. why young girls watch this and your words have such power. So even if you don't agree with Candace Owens or Gail King, they're black women. So, and, and, so, and John, our friend John Murray said, yeah, but she's not on the level of the black women I admire and aspire to and are, and are energized by. So she don't get the same beautiful adjectives. I understand that, but there's still girls coming up. Like argue on Candace's level and put her, get, you know, bring her down with the points that you're making. Don't reduce right. us to bitch and cunt. That's too simple. And it's so right. dismissive, and I feel it speaks and to he's, young and he's, and he's a genius. He could have done and that. Genius. So that's aside from that, Kim. I love Dave Chappelle. I, that was the only issue that I had because even with Candace, I'm not gonna get so mad. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you fuck. So excuse me, you bitch. You did. This is not gonna happen. I would like to talk to her intelligently and say, Candace, I really am devastated inside that you're doing this to your own people. That you're turn. This goes back to slavery days, mm -hmm. Mama. And that you're turning against us and you're making people think that you are right. They're putting her on a demigod status. Yes. Uh, this base that loves Trump saying, well, this is how you read people really feel. You're going against your own people. And there's nothing wrong with having your own opinion. We not sheep, but you're yeah. literally, you're saying things that you know are not true, Candace. You you know that. That's all but I gotta say. You say she, she but but explain she replied to don lemon on a tweet a twitter basically she she's like thank you 
Uh, not Don yeah, Lemon, she, she was me to uh, David Chappelle. She was excited David Chappelle put her name in, in his mouth. And just so you, she's still, she's starstruck too, like Don Lemon yeah. was, because she knew she was a part of history. Because look, we're talking about Candace Owens. We're engaging. So she's getting much yeah. more publicity than she could have ever asked for, good or bad. Candace does not care. And Candace tweeted, you know, I love comics. Comics should talk about people. She was like, the fact that Dave Chappelle put me in his special, that's power, all in caps. Yes. She was like, but I dare you, Dave, to say all of that to my face. Now, see, I love that because she's like, come and talk. To, and I would love to see a discourse between Dave Chappelle and Candace Owens because they're Ooh. both intelligent. Candace ain't a stupid woman. She's real strategic. So don't mm -hmm. don't really get her to being dumb. And I would love to see a discourse where it doesn't, you're not talking over Candace, you're not calling her a bitch. Y'all talking and you're hitting her with history and with points. Yeah, I had to start texting. You saw me looking down. I had to I'm looking down the whole podcast, but we're gonna end this. But I, had, so I, had to, I had to respond to stuff, but we've been on here for two hours, Sherry Shepard. Look at all this stuff we were supposed to talk about. This is all a list of stuff we were supposed to talk about. And we didn't, but even you get didn't to talk it. about none of it. And then you said uh, relegated uh, in uh, in cinder uh, incendiary <laughs> statement, <laughs> incendiary <laughs> statement, proverbial relegated. I some that. What? I when I get passionate, I, I use big words. They only come. I'm going to check get all of them. I'm checking all of them, make sure they're real. So we're going to end this. We love you guys. And thank you so much for taking time out to listen to our podcast, Two Funny Mamas. Sometimes we're funny. Sometimes we, we like to do socially relevant issues and things yeah. that are we are passionate about. And we want to make you laugh, most of all. So please, there's a button right in the corner that says subscribe, please subscribe. Tell all your friends to subscribe. We do a, a podcast, a new episode drops every Thursday and yeah. we have fun. We have merchandise. I wanted to hold it up really quick. Yeah. We have merchandise. This is our two funny mamas. Our bag, that's our tote bag. This, um, it's in, Okay, there we go. Bag. Bag. We got t-shirts. Mm -hmm. And if you go to, I think the there's a uh the, the website is on our podcast, but it's uh by B Y J A C K by Jack.com slash two funny mamas. And we have t-shirts and coffee mugs and tote bags. If you get a t-shirt, they fit a little tight. We're working on the sizes, order two sizes up. Because if you don't want the t-shirt, like stand up Kim, so they can see. Kim and I like to wear fitted stuff. Oh. Stand up Kim. What am I showing? You showing how like how fitted your shirt is. So we wear. I, I, don't, have no, I don't have no bottoms on. Oh, <laughs> I can't stand up. Do you understand the bear that they would see if I stood up? The grizzly bear that's coming right, out these back. doors. Okay, we went that's too far. Sit back so I can show them the fitted shirt that you have on. Kim and I like to wear stuff that fits our body. So it's, hers is a little bit looser. Okay, you can come up. Stop feeling yourself. I just wanted to show that it fit. See, this is why you scared Kenny and he walked away. Just that cougar thing right there. You got a whole- my Walmart shirt, I love it. Okay. We're about to end this, but I'm saying if you order a t-shirt from our Two Funny Mamas merchandise page, yes. order two sizes up if you want it looser. Cause otherwise it fits. Like I, I usually wear a large and it fits like a medium. So just know that we're working on the t-shirt the size and we're about to get satin bonnets. Two Funny Mama Satin Bonnets. I want to do a Two Funny Mama lip color line because we always wear yeah. really cute lipstick, like lip gloss. So we got Big Vision. Thank you for supporting us because this is all yes. done by us ourselves, funded by Kim Whitley and I. We don't have no big promoters behind it. So thank you. Please tell your friends to subscribe to our podcast because the way it works, we got to get 4,000 subscribers before we can get YouTube to, before we can monetize it and make any kind of money to pay the bills. So we're asking that and leave a comment, leave a comment. We are gonna do where we announce the winners cause we're supposed to give um, merchandise away to people who could guess when I was gonna be dating again. So we have not forgotten oh, about right. you. Kim won't let me do that yet cause we keep going on and on and talking about a bunch of stuff. So I never get to do it, but I, I, I got the names and I'm gonna compile them so we can do a, a giveaway. But Follow us on Instagram at Kim Whitley, at Sherry E. Shepard. But literally, please tell your friends about our podcast, Two Funny Mamas. And yes. Wherever we love you, you listen. Subscribe. And, listen and, and, and if you want to listen to us, we're on yes. every podcast platform. Just look up Two Funny Mamas, T-W-O-F-U-N-N-Y-M-A-M-A-S, Two Funny Mamas. 
we're on the podcast and just leave a comment please on the podcast and on our visual YouTube. So we love you. We have said, I had a great time, Kim. I had a good time. Thank you everyone. Thank you, Chris, for jumping in with us and we will talk to y'all next week. Okay, wow, really? Okay. (laughs) We'll talk to you guys next week. Next week. Bye everybody. God bless you.